Good afternoon and welcome to my daily chat. Um, this is episode number 699. Yes, tomorrow will be 700. Oh my God. Um, and the topic today is, does your self-talk talk back? And do you even notice? Um, I'll break that down in a moment, but before I get into that, let me choose myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day <laughs> and why there's maybe some value in it for you. My name is Barry Selby, in case you didn't notice on the title above the broadcast. I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And I help my clients, mostly women, create balance in love, life, and business. It's also what inspired these talks over two years ago called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart, which has now been abbreviated to MFTM, so you can figure that one out. And today we're at episode number 699. So quite a few of these under my belt. I'll give you the links at the, at the end of the broadcast for where you can find the replays, by the way. And so today's topic is, um, does your self-talk talk back? And do you even notice? The reason for this topic, <laughs> um, yesterday I did a pretty, it, was, it wasn't a very happy talk. Um, it, was, it was after hearing from three friends of mine who had three of their, had, each had a friend of theirs commit suicide that day. So yesterday was a pretty heavy day for some people. And so I wasn't exactly in a great mood about it, but I talked about this thing about reaching out, getting connection and everything else. But I want to speak more to people who are feeling challenged in some ways. We have, excuse me, my teeth. We have, we have this amazing gift to talk to ourselves. I don't mean out loud in public. I'm talking about the inner voice. You may have noticed when you're around in the world or if you're out in interactions that even though something may be going, going, going on out there or maybe you're reading emails or maybe you're in conversation with somebody else, at the very same time, there's another little voice going on in here. Maybe it's just me, I think, but everyone else does it too, I believe. I could be wrong. Do you have this experience? I think I know I, know I do. So I'm aware that there's a multi-track going on. And because of that, it's not always easy to focus on everything that's going on. I know I found myself at certain times in conversation with people, you know, you might think it's drifting off. It's more like that little voice has hijacked my perception and my awareness and taken me somewhere else. My attention has gone over there instead of over here. So I miss the communication. It's happened when I watched the TV show, which was happened when I've been in the movies. <coughs> Excuse me. It's happened when I'm watching videos online, when I've been watching, reading emails, I lost my place, reading a book. It happens all over the place. And again, I don't think I'm the only person doing this, so I hope it's not just me. I'm just exposing my, um, I'm, I'm uh, exposing my vulnerability of things that I'm the only one doing. But I think we've all done this, so we all do this. That I put under the heading of self-talk, basically, because it is usually a voice or a word inside that we're hearing or seeing or feeling that are distracting us from where we're focused. And so we might be looking somewhere other than where we are because that voice is taking our attention and going wank over there. Interesting word, wonk, you know what, I don't know, the sound effect didn't work. But basically moving us over there versus focusing where we want to go. And the challenge with that is that, that, that voice is not usually focusing on our greatest good. It's usually some sort of old voice from way back when that's still running. And oftentimes it puts us in a place where we don't get done what we want to get done. We don't succeed, we don't get, take impact. We spend our time attempting to get something done, but meanwhile this little voice is going nudge, 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 and pushing us off track. So self-talk is a tool that can, can be trained to serve us versus being let loose and running amok like a puppy without a leash running all over the shop and we basically don't have control over it. The level below that, or the level above, above, below, I'll say it's below, below, I'll start with that one, is that oftentimes we're not even aware it's happening. We're not even aware that we're listening to a voice other than what's out there. That's not a conscious, intentional voice sometimes. Because the thing is, if you're like me, you, you think that as a conscious person, I'll always tell myself good things, I'll always be affirming the truth, I'll be holding the vision, speaking about what I want to create, manifesting my reality all the time in every single moment. Not so much. Unfortunately, it's something that I have to call myself back to. In fact, it's a practice that I'm still practicing to a, to a degree because I have to keep putting visual markers in my field of vision to get my attention back. That's a clue, by the way. To get myself back to focus. Like having a gratitude jar that I've been stuffing to the gills since I started at the beginning of the year with at least three things every day I'm grateful for. And I put it in the jar and I put the jar where I can see it to keep myself on track to remember that because these little things can be tools to bring ourselves back to a positive direction. 
So self-talk is a, when I say it this way, it's not a tool so much as it's actually a part of who we are that can be redirected in favor of where we want to go. It's kind of like, it's kind of like the Holy Grail in a way, because most of us, that voice is usually on a different course than we are. And if you're like me, and I'm hoping you are, <laughs> that voice can be pretty challenging at times. I don't mean that you should have the same as I do, but I'm guessing you're no different from me in that sense. And, I, and as I said in other broadcasts, and I talked about this a few days ago, I've done, I've done a lot of work over the years, a lot of seminars, teachings, trainings, everything else, and that voice still persists. It's like, how the hell does it keep getting in there? How does it keep you know, insinuating itself into my awareness and distracting you from where I want to go? I should be masterful of this. I should be so powerful in authority and, and knowing everything and being so smart. You're right. <laughs> the reality is that this small voice, this, this, this self-talk, this inner voice, and it's not what I would call the still small voice. I'm not sure I don't sure mess that up. Let me just qualify. The still small voice, I believe, is the voice of spirit. I've had that happen many times in my life to great effect and great impact to help me write my book. It's been very powerful. I'm talking about the little inner voice that has been running from our subconscious for most of our lives. That voice is the self-talk voice. Because the still small voice speaks to us, the self-talk tends to speak about us. Hang on, just checking if that makes sense. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Because the thing is for us, as conscious human beings, awake human beings, aware human beings, we may be aware that there's some inner dialogue that's going on that's not constructive, that's not putting us where we want to go. This is actually was inspired again about yesterday's talk. The, I talked about... Uh, talked about um, <sighs> It was basically about, basically about the suicides that I heard about and just how a lot of times we actually, looking back on that, realize that we tell ourselves things that are not true and paint ourselves into a desperate situation where we choose to fail in our lives. I didn't want to refer to that too much because that was, that was a very, in the moment, um, unhappy expression, but I wanted to speak about, you know, reach out, I put the phone number and the website for suicide, suicide hotline and everything else. But I want to speak to some pieces today that might be helping you if you've even, just so you don't get out of that road. I shared yesterday I had, I've had some close calls with that myself over the years where I felt that tendency. But I also realized that there was an inner voice that was stronger, that still small voice, that was stronger than the self-talk that was running at the same time. I'm, I'm going to get back to the point in a minute. I'm realizing I'm off on the slight, I'm in left field right now, so bear with me. So our, my, sorry, my journey through that process of coming close to considering suicide at different times always had me reflect back to a deeper place because the self-talk was not the big voice. It wasn't the most powerful voice, thankfully. A much clearer voice per, um, persisted and persevered through that to speak truth to me, which got me back to myself. For that, I'm very grateful, by the way. But the self-talk doesn't seem to abate. It still goes on. And what I've learned over the time, I mentioned like the gratitude, journal, gratitude um, jar that I have, or gratitude journal, same thing, has the effect of, in some ways, changing what you perceive so that voice doesn't have the same impact. Now, there's two things going on here. One is knowing who you are is not controlled by that voice, that's first. Secondly, is retraining that voice to be in alignment and to actually say things that are constructive and positive of where you want to go. This is mastery, by the way, when you get to this point. And it's something I've been working on for a long time myself, and I'm still working on it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a professional at this. I don't have this down perfectly. However, I do have some keys that help you again. The gratitude jar is one of those things. It's putting, as a, a symbol, putting things in your visual field. If you're someone who's, who has an environment like an office or a home office or a bedroom or your car, we put things in your field of view that, that are affirming what you really want that will maybe contradicting that still small voice. Sorry, excuse me. Contradicting that self-talk. Still small voice is good. Self-talk is the other one. Just qualifying that again. So, for example, putting sticky notes on your car dashboard if you're in a car that are affirmative, positive. That you, so you notice those things every so often when you're driving, your eyes may fall upon one of those things that goes, oh yeah, remember. That sort of trigger is a powerful tool to get you back on track. So, and there are many other ones too. I mean, doing affirmations, putting affirmations on your computer screen, putting affirmations on your phone, putting affirmations on a, post, on a poster board on the wall are ways of also retraining your mind to hear something different from what you're telling yourself. And at times what you start doing, if you start repeating internally using your inner voice like self-talk to tell yourself what you're seeing in the affirmations you start to shift the perception perspective and aspect of your self-talk um, voice 
I don't, have a, I don't have a pet name for it yet. Maybe by the end of the broadcast I will. The reason I'm talking about this also is because it is part of the course that I'm launching this weekend, which I invite you to check out. Because self-talk is one of the powerful tools. The course is, by the way, it's called Coming Home to Yourself. And self-talk is one of those pieces that we forget about. A lot of times people offer courses that are very much about affirming affirmations and doing other things. But if you don't deal with the self-talk inside, it's very hard to move through to the place you want to get to. Tools like self-forgiveness are a powerful tool as well. I've got that in my, in my uh, course as well. Because having the ability to forgive ourselves is what tends to release the judgments that that self-talk keeps, perpe keeps perpetuating and we fall in the trap. So self-talk for me is, is a wonderful opportunity to tune in, to listen and course correct what's going on inside. So again, visual awareness in your field of view so you see things that affirm something different. Self-forgiveness to release self from the attachment to those judgments of what you've been maybe running in that self-talk. But the first step I said at the beginning is becoming aware. Because I said if you're even, not even aware of it, it doesn't help. So becoming aware of your self-talk. So listen to what you're saying to yourself inside. Because it may be running as a low vibration. You don't actually hear it consciously necessarily. But if you tune in and listen, that's when you can make a difference. Because all the stuff I suggested you do only really works, only really helps if you in fact become aware of what it is in the first place. So you can course correct. Because self-talk is something that runs, well, I'll say 24-7 except when you're sleeping pretty much. I mean, meditation is where I'm, I find I can get, I can, I'm saying not get rid of it, but I can quiet it down. Although oftentimes it runs so loud, it doesn't stop even during meditation. So having tools that I've been working on help me to have more mastery over it. Again, I'm learning and becoming better at mastering my self-talk and it's a continuous journey. So I hope, I invite you to check out for yourself, not hope, I, I, I invite you to check out for yourself to listen inside when you're in the world and when you're alone. When you're watching some entertainment and when you're, when you're about ready to go to bed, what are you telling yourself? What are you, what are you actually describing to yourself about your life, about your world, about your experience that might not be true? Because oftentimes our perception is through a filter. So the self-talk that's inside is looking at the world through that lens that is not accurate and making up stories about what the reality of the world is. What happened in the world isn't oftentimes as bad as we think it is inside. Now, some people who are very advanced spiritual souls are people who can basically affirm positive no matter what happens. So if something bad happens, they affirm something positive. Now, just not put myself in that camp, but I've had experiences where I look back and realize that something that was bad happened three or four years ago actually bore fruit that really helped me out now. So I look back at those experiences and I talk about them without any attachment to upset or, or judgment or fear. I actually talk about it with gratitude. That can happen as well. But the self-talk that runs normally through our consciousness is really something that is um, it's an accumulation of automatic words and thoughts and beliefs that aren't true. Because our self-talk is almost a um, not a safety valve, but it's almost like a container to keep us safe. The thing about this is, and this is part of the, the challenge too, which again is what I have in my course, is realizing that that safety that you're being kept in is actually a constraint and a restraint from you, able to, from, from you being able to get what you really want and to get where you want to go, to actually achieve the goals and the visions you have because you've been held back to be safe. So self-talk is a self-limiting, generally speaking, self-limiting tool that we unconsciously use to keep ourselves in a contained space. I'm not a big fan of that. I'd rather retrain, re-educate and reframe my languaging and my self-talk to be affirmative where I want to go, to support me where I want to get up to, to create the reality I'm putting myself into. And I'm practicing that myself, I'm, I'm doing different things, I'm exploring different ways of making it work, which is why I've created that part of the course, because I'm finding some things work better than others. I've had visions since the beginning of the year, some things that have happened this year that I put out there and I can feel at the same time I'm saying this is what I'll create and have happened this year. This other little voice, this, this, small, this self talk voice going, nah, it's not going to happen. So I've had to talk to that voice a few times and it's getting less attached to holding back and being safe. So stay tuned, that's going to happen, that's going to change this year, I know. So if you want to join me in, the, in that part of the process, I have a, I have a new course I've mentioned before called Coming Home to Yourself. It's a pay what you want, yes, pay what you want course, and we discussed how that's gonna work. 
course that provides at this point it's 17 or 18 different self reflective self supportive self expressing tools over three months each week is one or two different aspects that will help you create better self support self confidence self trust self appreciation self love self care and a bunch more stuff I'll put the link in the comments you can check it out which is it's barryselby.com forward slash coming home and you can check it out there's just a simple, there's a simple description there I don't have a look I don't have an opt-in page I don't have a, a registration page because you have to talk to me first yeah it's gonna be like that so when you read it and if you're interested in finding out more information you click the link to get on my calendar and we talk and then we set up what works for us both and then I get you signed up um, the plans to start I'm planning to launch it this weekend although I've got a couple of people who are on the fence and once they decide I may move it back a little bit to accommodate them but I want to give you the opportunity to check it out yourself. I'll put the link in the comments. So if you're interested in joining me, it is again, pay what you want within reason um, that I'm offering this out. So this will be something that is a no brainer. But the question is, is your self talk gonna keep you out or let you get in your choice? So um, to summarize this, self talk is a pattern we run automatically, I believe. But at the same time, we have the ability to course correct and change where that comes through and how it works for us. You have the choice to change it. How you do it is up to you. I have an offering that I'm suggesting. If you don't do that, find something because all of us, I believe, have a, an interesting dance with self-talk. I believe we can reaffirm it, transform it, and um, inspire it into a way that supports us where we wanna go. If you're interested in that, check out my course. Um, I think that's about it. I think there's anything else on that. I do, I do invite you to put some, to respond and say if you in fact have the same self-talk experience I've been having, so I'm not alone. <laughs> I'd be kind of curious to know. Um, I, <laughs> if you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, these are done every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays are put onto my business page on Facebook and then my YouTube channel, so give you and find those. Um, business page is barryselby.author on Facebook. And then on YouTube, my channel is Barry Selby. Please like my Facebook page and feed, please like, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's a bit convoluted, um, which is face, which is youtube.com forward slash, uh, slash user slash Barry Selby. Um, there's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine where all these live and you can watch them there anytime you want. Tomorrow is number 700. Tomorrow is the big one, so to speak. It's, it's, the, it's another one of those milestones. I have no idea what I'm gonna talk about. If you have any topics, by the way, that you want me to share that I haven't talked about before, please message me over social media. Um, I'm willing to invite new comments, new thoughts, and ideas of what I can maybe share and talk about because I've covered quite a bit over 700 broadcasts. <laughs> I know I'll have anything, I'll have something, but if you have ideas, please send them to me and I'll, I'll see if I can incorporate them into the broadcast. Um, if you have any questions, thoughts, please put them below in, in the, when you want to sign off. If you want to share, share this, if you want to share this with anybody or any groups you belong to that might get benefit from this, please share it with them. Um, Oh, thank you. Thank you, Karen. Nice to see you, by the way. That was, that was great. Started a watch party. Yeah, watch parties I haven't seen before. That's pretty cool. So thank you so much. And by the way, it's the beginning of May. We're going to talk about getting together. I remember. Um, so again, I'll put the links to the course in the comments and you can check it out if you want to go directly to it, which is again, barryselby.com forward slash coming home. Um, it's going to start very shortly and it's going to run. It's three months, but it's very, it's very light interaction. So you don't have to worry about spending hours a day doing it. It's something you can incorporate into your life. That's the idea. And uh, yeah, I think I've said enough. I'm waffling now. Thanks for being with me. I'll be back in tomorrow for number 700. I trust it has been of value to you. And I do invite you to uh, consider for yourself how you can change the language with yourself, up love yourself talk, and really come into alignment with supporting yourself where you want to go in life. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow at number 700. Take care. Bye. <laughs>